Flora Sigismondi, and um, I'm going to show you some photographs that are um, a collection of photographs that are from um, a book that I just published. Um, today I want to talk about ideas and where uh, my ideas come from. And I'd like to explore the areas of, um, ooh, this is funny, <laughs> okay, no, it's okay, yeah, of uh, fear, pain, constraint, and deconstruction of the human form. And for some reason these, these um, certain subjects keep on coming up in my work. And I try to find the beauty in these places. And when the beauty isn't apparent at first glance, I try to study it and really take my time and look at it until I, you know, after a period of time, I realize that, you know, there's no reason why it shouldn't be beautiful. And, um, and, I, and I, you know, find whether it's a color, or it's a form, or if it's, you know, taking away all the sort of preconceived ideas about something and um, you're left with beauty. And conquering these dislikes opens the world to new possibilities, new ways of looking at things, uh, which I think is very important. Um, I sometimes wonder if there's a big mass outside and um, outside a cosmic energy ball that exists somewhere in the void in which we're plugged into as humans and connect and um, on a more subconscious level. Um, like, or else how can we explain that people on the opposite sides of the world can come up with similar ideas at the same time? Um, you know, and do we call this collective consciousness or is it mere coincidence? I'd like to think it's the collective consciousness. But, um, and one of my biggest sources of inspiration are my dreams. I dream very, very vividly. And things come to me, images come to me in, in my new, like, the, the most extreme detail. And um, it happens sort of in that semi-conscious state right before I fall asleep, where I'm willing to kind of let go of preconceived um, ideas and sort of the natural laws of physics where, you know, walls bend, and, and I think it just opens to much more abstract forms. And um, I normally, you know, go to sleep between the hours of one and five. And that's where I do my best work, where it's really late at night and I know that everybody's asleep. I kind of have to know that everybody is sort of really quiet. Or I also put myself through sleep deprivation, um, where I can, you know, my average sleep would be between two and three hours a night. And I do that for a long period of time and, and sort of that's the time when I, I uh, think of images that, are, uh, that I, you know, are the closest to me. I find are the deepest um, that affect me. Um, and when at, at this point, at this period, I visualize things in a much, um, I visualize feelings and emotions in a physical form. And they, uh, forms that I can experience and touch. And they come to me as finished shapes. And at first I don't know what they mean or what they are and until when I'm done the work, they, they sort of become, I can understand more about myself. When, at, at this point, at this period, I visualize things in a much, uh, I visualize feelings and emotions in a physical form. And they, uh, forms that I can experience and touch. And they come to me as finished shapes. And at first I don't know what they mean or what they are. And until, uh, when I'm done the work, they, they sort of become, I can understand more about myself and sort of they become more decipherable. And so when I look at, at work um, that I've done uh, like years, years ago or I've done in the past, I sort of, it signifies moments in my life that I know what I was going through. It sort of is, it becomes a sort of a memoir of uh, my experience. And uh, someone asked me once if you see these images in such detail, why make them? Is it not merely seeing them enough? And for me, it's about experiencing them, about feeling them and touching them and creating this safe environment where I'm able to um, express myself and uh, where I'm uninhibited and not, um, and it's sort of a safe environment where um, I can sort of regurgitate the things that obsess me and, and th therefore let go of them and move forward.
Um, I find myself very fortunate that I'm able to have a playground to do this, or I think I would be a very different kind of person. <laughs> I don't like to think about that one too much. but. <laughs> Um, and the creative process it can be a very mysterious thing. How do we know when to begin and when to stop? For me, painting has always been that kind of, I, I study painting and that's uh, where I come from. And for me, that's the, the place where I like to exercise the, it's the purest form from a thought down to the physical form. And it's the purest streamline. And I try to exercise that um, in directing. And I think it's, it's quite a challenge because you're bombarded with chaos constantly. And for me, keeping that touchstone with painting sort of keeps me very focused. And, uh, and it's very important also with the, the process of painting because there's no one really there to tell you when to stop or to suggest to use another color. And you really kind of develop this dialogue um, between yourself that has, isn't really um, influenced by the outside world. And, and um, what else was I gonna talk about? Um, and also, you know, another thing that I'm obsessed about, and, and you can see in my work, is sort of um, the human body and deconstructing the human body and looking at it almost from an alien's perspective and taking it and sort of, you know, artists have been deconstructing everything from, you know, architecture to uh, music. And sort of, I think the human body is sort of the last thing that we can look at and, and uh, play with and sort of look at it as, you know, the two arms and the two legs and what do they do and sort of creating new beings um, by dissecting them. So it's sort of, I guess, like a Frankenstein thing, but creating new people. Um, and you know, there's something that happens when the piece is finished and you put it into the world and you're no longer, it is no longer your piece, really. I mean, it comes from a place that you've experienced. But then you put it out into the world and people interpret it the way they want to interpret it and it gains things and turn becomes something else. And um, that sort of is, you know, sort of, it grows and becomes something else and something that takes up time and space. and. It's interesting to see that process, to look at, at uh, your, your work, and it, it no longer really is, um, it comes from that place where you've experienced, but it no longer necessarily signifies that to other people. So, um, and I wanna show you a short film, my, uh, my first short film that I've directed, and I'm currently working on developing a couple of features. So, uh, here we go. And it's called Spiral.
nothing to worry about, Mr. Adamson. I promise. I won't breathe a word. 